Hey everybody, welcome to Q&A video number 17. Make sure to keep asking questions, doesn't matter what they're about, they can be about anything. Hi. Just know that I'm not going to respond to, Hey DW, what do you think about this game? Do you think it's good? That's a review request, and I put those on the list, but I don't actually answer them in Q&As. Anywho, if you ask me about a specific feature of said game, then feel free, because I'll answer those, but not um, just, what do you think about this game? Anywho, let's go ahead and get started with a question from King Pluto Zhao One. Uh, what are your thoughts on Bethesda getting full copyrights to the Fallout name? And in the process, in 2013, Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics, the original trilogy, will no longer be sold in stores. I'm bothered by it. Uh, it it does concern me whether Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics will continue to be sold, especially on places like GOG. Um, but I do think it is their right to. Uh, actually gain control of the IP, because they do actually own the IP to begin with. Um, they license Interplay to uh, not only publish the pr original three titles, that's that was part of their original agreement, um, but they also said, this is in, uh, incumbent upon your ability to produce a Fallout MMO, and Interplay has not followed up on that. Which is why Bethesda won that lawsuit and will be cutting off their support for... Uh, publishing the the original trilogy. I hope what Bethesda does with this is that they'll just publish the original trilogy themselves. And hopefully it'll continue to be published on GOG and as well as other digital outlets as well. But, um... Ultimately, it just worries me that uh, we may not be able to just easily get access to Fallout anymore. We'll see how it goes. Do I think it's right, though? Absolutely not. I think it's within their rights as uh, copyright holders, but I don't believe it is a right action, so to speak. Next three are from Metroid and Halo Guy. He has a lot of questions, doesn't he? Um, do you believe Call of Duty is affecting all areas of gaming and not just the shooter genre? Actually, yes it is, and you're seeing this more and more. Because people look at the sales, uh, by people I mean publishers, look at the sales that Call of Duty is having, and they say, oh, this is the best-selling video game of all time. It's a first-person shooter. We need more of this. And we need to follow their business model and everything. That's why you're seeing a lot more DLC coming out. I mean, that's that was just going to be a given no matter what, but it, a part of that is the success of Call of Duty's DLC sales. Um... You're also seeing a lot of series getting converted to first-person shooters, uh, like uh, the one that I constantly get tons of hate about for some weird reason. XCOM, the FPS, which has nothing to do with XCOM, yet people keep trying to tell me it does. And, um, of course, uh, Syndicate, which I think will actually work okay as an FPS, but I've never played the original Tactics series. Uh, it is a fairly action-oriented tactic series, though, so it, it might work out okay, uh, as long as they keep it relatively true to the original title. So, but the thing is that when you're converting everything to an FPS, sometimes things just don't work as FPS. I mean, can you imagine what would happen if Sid Meier's Civilization got turned into an FPS? Or, I don't know, um... Let's just say, for instance, The Incredible Machine, suddenly FPS. Gabriel Knight, FPS. Uh, nothing would make sense that way. KOTOR, the FPS. No, just, no. That that would make no sense. So, what they're going to end up doing is going to build up massive hype campaigns and probably just end up releasing the same game over and over again. Um, which does happen quite a bit anyway, but... Call of Duty has perfected the art of... Um, making very small incremental changes and uh, releasing it as full price games. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, it's just that the Call of Duty series itself has gotten old just because they haven't changed enough of it yet. So, again, we'll see how things go, but it is affecting other areas of gaming and that does bother me. Next one. Do you prefer indie games or AAA titles? If so, what's your most preferred indie game? Um, it really just depends on the game itself. It's not whether it's indie or not. I'm not one of those people who go, oh, that's so mainstream. Um, but I mean, if if the mainstream thing is a detriment, then it it is a problem. But if it's not, then that doesn't factor in at all, except for how I uh, assess that particular score. I don't hold indie games and AAA titles to the same exact standards. Um, I know the difficulties of indie development because I'm trying to do it. So... 
I do have more sympathy for those guys, and I do have lower standards in terms of stuff like visuals and um, um, audio design and all that, just because, well, what can you do? You're indie. You don't have necessarily have access to a huge sound studio or uh, like amazing graphics artists. I mean, you might, but that sort of thing doesn't always happen all that much. So I don't hold it quite to the same standards. But whether I like it or not just depends on the game itself. And whether I prefer a AAA title to an indie game, again, it just depends on the individual game in question. It's not whether I like one over the other. I just like both. And the last one from Metroid and Halo Guy is, what game in recent history do you believe is the most innovative? There we go. Innovative. Innovative. I don't care. Um, It's kind of hard to say, actually, because there really hasn't been much uh, innovation in the past even decade, really. Um, I guess maybe Portal, but it's really not that innovative. Uh, the Portal mechanic was around before Portal actually came out. It's just they kind of popularized it. Um, apart from that, I really can't think of all that much. I mean, Mirror's Edge, sure, but again, that the wall running and all that was uh, around before Mirror's Edge came out. It just kind of brought it into the limelight. So I can't really say too much about that. I guess Mirror's Edge or um, Portal, but that's kind of a big iffy statement. And the last question is from Omega Wolf Studios. DW, what is your heritage? And he means, like, uh, where does my family come from? Well, I actually had to look this up recently, and um, so here you go. Part of the family came from the Palz. That's the Palatine region of Germany, a.k.a. Rheinland-Pfalz. Uh, if you know where that is. So, in the area around, say, Mainz, um, Trier, that area, big heavy Roman influence, lots of vineyards and all that, so that's part of the uh, family, so German. And part of the family is also British, namely Welsh and uh, English, in terms of the British part. I guess if you consider Ireland a part of the British Isles, then well, you can consider um, Ireland in there as well. So Irish, a uh, little bit of Cherokee Indian. Um, I don't know Cherokee Native American, I should say, but that's just the way we talk here. <laughs> um, and some French in there too. There's probably Dutch in there somewhere, but I don't know for sure. So I'm all over the place, and that's one thing you gotta love about America. Actually, we're basically mutts. Anyway, I've been really getting in touch with that German part of the heritage lately, as well as the Welsh. Now, I don't speak Welsh, but I'm trying to learn it, and it is a massive pain to learn Welsh. So, just fair warning there. But, um, yeah, that, that's how it is. Anyway, there you go. Q&A video number 17. Like I said, make sure to keep asking questions. Again, doesn't matter what they're about. They're about anything. I mean, obviously, I had a fairly wide assortment here. So, there you go, folks, and I'll catch you guys in later videos.